So guys, uh, another special episode with another special guest. I'm, uh, you know, privileged to have Holly Williams today on the show. And she's been a real estate investor for over 20 years. Her portfolio includes properties in New York, upstate New York, Brooklyn, New Orleans, LA. And she also has investments in Tennessee, South Carolina, Texas, and Florida. Holly is a principal at keepmore.com where they have over 20 multifamily apartment communities totaling 4,500 units. Uh, yes, you heard me. Valued over $400 million. So again, pleasure spending the time with you today, Holly. I really appreciate it. Yes, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure. And, and, you know, one of the things with multifamily is it's a team effort. So people think that I own $400 million. You know, it, 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 I've been involved and I'm proud to be a part of the team. And so wanted to just clarify that for everybody that's listening in Ireland. Um, <laughs> because I work with the top syndicators in the business. It's so I'm really privileged to do that. But it's great to be here. Yeah, and thank awesome. you for having me. Oh, I think thanks. Thanks for tuning in and you know, spending the time. I know that you're busy uh, with the work that's going on around, around the house. It's not going to be long, I promise that, but I know you're going to give a lot of great, valuable advice for people who are looking to join into multifamily or just real estate space. So, I would love to hear your story again coming to $400 million where you, you know, have this business again together with the partners. Um, would you tell people your story? How did you get into real estate in the first place? Well, I invested in it. So, I mean, that's the short answer. Um, I was very fortunate in that I knew uh, this is a club. This is a private investment. And it's, you know, you have private investments and you have public investments. And it's ama it was amazing to me when I discovered that I was an accredited investor, first of all, I didn't even know what that was. Um, secondly, I was uh, amazed and I thought this was a scam. I said, this, this is impossible. There's no way we can get these returns. There's no way uh, that we can you know, get these tax benefits. I thought that the only way to invest in real estate was to go spend a lot of time finding a house or whatever and, and you know, the water heater goes out and, you have to, I mean, it's just a, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of risk. And, you know, it's New York. I live in the wrong place to do that. Although I have property in New York, it's, it's mostly, I, I bought, you know, you buy for appreciation or you buy for cash flow. It's hard to, your primary motive has to be one or the other. And uh, so here you buy for cash. I mean, appreciation and hope it goes up. Well, hope is not a strategy. I do that in the stock market. So that's the, you know, I watched my parents, I'm older. I know I look like I'm 30, but uh, you know, I watched my parents, what wealth they had disappear because they bought into what we all have been learning our whole our whole lives, or, or, or at least me, and at least here in the U.S., that's what, that's what they teach us, you know, so all I knew was the 401k, and the mutual funds, and the this, and the that, and I found myself paying 50% of everything we made in taxes, and getting really nothing, not very much for it, so we're not very good stewards of our money, so I invested with, the, with a friend, that uh, got into this and, and uh, he, he, you know, I, through that, I began to see what this was all about. And the more I did it, the more I moved stock money over to, and, and you know, just passive investing on the L, LP side. And about six years later, I just start, kept pouring, you know, probably $500,000, $600,000 at the end of the day. So that's what I did, and I, when my income from that hit six figures that tax deferred, I, it didn't make sense to work anymore. So that's what happened. Wow. And I'm amazed at the number of people, you know, who I have friends that they just can't make the plunge. They, you know, for whatever, they, they're afraid of losing control, 
you know, or they're, yeah, we don't have control anyway. Yeah. Uh, the government's going to do what they're going to do. You have to get permits. Construction is terror, you know, a hassle, all of, all kinds of things. You never have control. Yeah. And, uh, you know, or, or it's risky, but you know, you, we can mitigate those risks. I mean, we really mitigate those risks and risky is buying a stock, paying retail, and uh, watching it, hoping that it goes up. Yeah, yeah. As you mentioned, it's definitely not, not the right strategy uh, to do. Just hope for things to go up and, you know, just, uh, yeah, it, it's definitely not. So I, that's why people watch the show like this, because they don't want to play with this, you know, strategy of maybe, uh, you know, nobody likes to live in a maybe land think, thinking like maybe things will change. Uh, like, okay, so, but we got a lot of people in the audience who are actually, you know, looking to invest into real estate, looking to be part of real estate business. Maybe that's multifamily, wholesaling, flipping. I'm not sure. I'll leave a comment. But, uh, you know, they have a full-time job still. So is it possible or if, if it's not, if it, if it is, would you give an advice for people, you know, how to start this business if they're still having a full-time job? Well, that's what... That's what I did, and what, what what happened was the more I, the more I invested in these things, the more. So I watched my parents. You see, the problem with the stock market is that you know we're all taught the first thing that the financial calculators ask you is how long do you expect to be retired. So I, they want you to die broke. You know, I can speak to the U.S and that the, the entire system is all meant to, for you to die broke. And that's exactly what happened to my parents. And, um, and they almost didn't make it because they outlived the projections, right? So, um, and the biggest thing was that the stock market goes like this. So let's say you've got a million dollars and you know we're all from the mindset of this is 10%, I'm just gonna speak to the US because I'm not sure about Ireland, but what we're taught, and I learned it in business school, I learned it, and this is what, in your head, it's like I, I have a million dollars and that's gonna throw off 10%. So I'm gonna make 80 grand a year in my retirement. So that's great, right? The problem happens is when what they don't tell you is that to get that 80 grand, you've got to withdraw some money, right? Or, or actually you don't, but what happens is, is that it doesn't throw off that 10% all the time. And so sometimes it doesn't throw off anything. And so what you have to do is you have to withdraw the principal. And meanwhile, all of this is getting taxed. If it's from a 401k, it's getting taxed as regular income. So you put it in, in a reg and if it's in a regular mutual fund, you're paying capital gains on their buying and selling and all because they want the fees yeah. that you don't hear about. So I got a $65,000, 1099. I had a $65,000 gain one year and, and some money that was outside of a 401k and I didn't sell any stock. It was them buying and selling and I had to pay $25,000 in capital gains. So the tax laws here is, you know, you can do some incredible things with real estate. The problem is it's a lot of work. So what a syndication is, is very simply, that's just it. This is so simple. We go and we buy a cash flowing asset, a giant garden style type apartment complex. And you can do that in a lot of markets in the U.S. And we go in and we raise, raise money from... We all, and I invest in every, every deal pretty much. I mean, and, um, because, and, and we, we go in together and we buy this apartment complex and we all share in it. So if you think about a REIT, a publicly traded REIT, do you all have REITs in Ireland? Real estate oh. investment trust. Oh yeah, like of course. Yeah. Yeah. If you think about that, think about what it takes for all the advertising for the, company. I mean, this is these, you know, somebody's paying for all of this. I don't care if it's no load or whatever. That's what people think when you take all of the million dollar salaries out of it and all of, all of that, 
you can you can do a whole whole bunch um, and that's what people don't don't really understand that a re at, at least here they're taking like nine percent acquisition fees and stuff i mean over here a private investment takes three yeah you know so it's a whole different economic structure and this is what the wealthy i mean like the really really wealthy people in in america the 0.5 percent or whatever this is what they do this is nothing new i'm not talking and but we just don't know about it it's hidden and that's why i book my up i have a book coming out called hidden investing and what the wealth what the wealthy wealthiest one percent know that we don't and you know this is if you're a successful um, business person or professional and you have a job and a career, this I haven't found any better place to put money. Um, and especially for if you ever want income and retirement. So that's what I did. I kept, I lived off my salary and my advertising job and, and just invested in these things just like the stock market. So, you know, it, if you want to get into it, that's really the best way. And I mean, there's no such thing as passive investing, as passive income, rather. That money, you got to have money, right? <laughs> you got to have money somehow, some way. And you have to make it or raise it or something. So, um, and you have to have a bunch of experience. You better know what you're doing. And so that's where partners come in. Yeah. So. Okay. Does that, I, does that help? Oh, that definitely helps. I, I mean, you told just to, took us on this journey and you told a great story and it's, it's an amazing it, story. It, 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 it sounds phenomenal, right? Like for the people who are watching thinking, oh, like, okay, but Holy is in a position maybe to tell that story and she's all good. Like, look at me, like, you know, I still have a full-time job and like maybe this journey is just a little bit too much for me. Like, would you give one piece of advice for people who might feel they are overwhelmed with all this information, like the starting point for them to yeah. go and, and get involved with the business? Well, see, you said the word business, and that's exactly what this is. So it's, it's I mean, learn about real estate, go to meetups, get into um, a group of like-minded people, right? And, and that will, that's the first thing. And then the, the second thing I would say is, is get business experience. So it's very difficult for somebody to come in here and do this by themselves. You have to have a partner when you start out. I've never known anybody that didn't. They either, they have some sort of, a, some partners that have done this before. Um, and you might have to give up some money the first time you do it, right? Um, but it's, it's very difficult to do this on an active general partner side with another job. You almost have to immerse yourself in it. And uh, I mean, this is just my opinion, what I've seen. I haven't seen um, very many successful syndicators that don't do this full time. It's just true. And investors like that too. They don't want to. It's funny because I one of my partners is a, is a recovering physician, right? And it's so funny. The first time I worked with him, he really practices medicine a couple of days a week just to keep his license up. He, he's a real estate person. But it said MD. You know, here's my partner. He's a physician. And all of my investors were like, forget it. I, you know, if, if he's the guy on the ground, I mean, I'm, I, doctors don't have time for that. I took, you know, when I started talking about his real estate experience first, then that was fine. Oh, by the way, he's yeah, yeah. a doctor, right? So it's, it's very difficult to gain trust and, mm -hmm. and do what you need to do. Um, so uh, what I did was over a period of six or seven years investing in these things by, and I had a, another job and now, I, you know, business experience, I couldn't be able to do what I'm doing without what I'd done in the business world. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. And you I know, I know nobody wants to hear that, but that's, that's, no, that, been that's my experience. I think that's exactly what people should hear, you know, cause nobody wants to face the, the, the truth, but you know, the truth is, is what's going to set you free, you know, from, 
maybe thinking about going into syndication while having a full-time job and maybe taking some other, you know, direction into going and again, looking at the market, maybe, I don't know, if go and fix and flip, maybe it's not the right time to, to go and do, but again, doing your due diligence and seeing maybe there's a different starting point for you instead of chasing what everybody else is doing. Cause I see like syndicators are popping like mushrooms, like all over the place, you know, every, every single day. So, you know, and the market could be saturated depending on where you are. But uh, yeah, definitely. And you mentioned that the, your partner is a Dan Hanford, if, if I'm sure. One of the, uh, yes. And, and yeah. Joe Fairless is the person that I knew before he, the, before I, before he got into this. So I knew, I know him from advertising. So yeah, and yeah, we're both yeah. on the board of the Texas tech school of uh, communications or advertising, whatever they're calling it these days. And so yeah. we're the, we are on the board together and, uh, from that advisory board, we, we, uh, got to know each other and, and I invested with him in his first deal. And then I helped him raise some capital to get started in this thing. And Love one it. thing has led to another, but. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. I'm trying to think about anyone that I know that has done this as a primary General. Now I know people that raise capital and mm -hmm. and are partners in a in a GP like 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 me, but I wasn't really raising the capital that I'm raising without you know as a full time employee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. definitely you have to you have to commit to this. I mean, you know, everybody's there that that we talk to, like every syndicator. You know, the first thing that they say like you don't want to lose other people money because that that's that's where the businesses are closing you know like so you have to be fully immersed into this like because if you have a job on your mind then you have to like go and do all these like put all these moving pieces together which is a lot going on like i don't, I don't know the business but i know there's a lot of moving pieces so it, it's it's tough definitely so let what me about tell you that i'll be down living in the model unit you know, mowing the lawn if, if we need to, to, you know, you know, yep. that, that's kind of attitude you need to have to, to really take investors money. Definitely. Okay. So what about, what about going into real estate with no money? Cause I see in a couple of books before out there in the market, like no money down, no money down, buy real estate, no money down. So is it, would, would that be a, an option or even a possibility for somebody who is looking to get involved? Well, not, not necessarily with a syndication, just because you really need to be an accredited investor and you need to, or a, at least a sophisticated investor. Um, there are all kinds of laws around, around there. You know, this is a club. It's a secret hidden thing, you know. Um, it's a private investment versus a public investment. So uh, to invest in a syndication is, is difficult without money. Um, there are things that you can do if you're willing to uh, do the sweat equity. You can find a deal and uh, get paid that way. Uh, you can uh, go in and, and, and again, partner with a syndicator that, and people that do have money um, because you need money to, to, to get into large apartment complexes just to get, I mean, to get a loan, right? You have to have someone, people signing on the loan, at least here in the U.S., that have a net worth of it of the of the size of the loan. Even though it's non-recourse, you still have to do that. So you, you really can't do this without mm. without a partner or partners that that have some. That somebody has money. Yep. Somebody's got to have money. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. That's why I say there's no such thing as passive income. Yeah. yeah. And. So, I mean, if you really wanted to do the, what I would do is I would get a job in a management company and I would learn all I could about apartment complex. I mean, that's exactly what I would do if I wanted to get into this. Um, mm -hmm. And if I were a young, my younger self and I would learn that, that way. And the second thing that I would do then is as I was learning, you know, you can make all kinds of contacts, right? So, yep. and I would, probably uh try to try to do something in a joint venture with a smaller uh, a lot of people get into this by house hacking we're doing that in brooklyn we you know we live in the bottom and rent out three units so you know there's a lot of ways if i were younger i would probably do something like that where 
you know, I got into one side of a duplex or something like that, where something where you can get some, start building some equity. I mean, Joe Fairless did, he did single family homes. I did single family homes. So there was somehow you have to get some equity and some business experience. Yep. And that's the truth as I, as I know it. I mean, God love you. If you I mean, there probably are some outliers, but you got to learn this somehow and you're not going to learn it enough to do it from a seminar or whatever. Mm. Yeah. That's yep. just, it's just my opinion. So. Yeah, and I think that's the truth. I mean, I mean, having 20 years experience in this business, I mean, you, you know, so what about, what about to all the people who are watching and I mean, they're just jacked. Like they're super excited about real estate. Like real estate is. They is, should be. It's the greatest thing uh, in, the on the planet. Greatest, it really is. The greatest thing. They want to have a tattoo on a chest saying multifamily investing. Like they, they, they're just all about it, you know, and, and they look at it as a get, get rich quick thing. So is real estate even that? I don't think so. So I think it's a really get rich slow. You know, it's interesting because I came from um, advertising and then I was a relatively early employee at AOL and at a company called Comscore. And, and so my background is like ad tech and, and advertising market research. Uh, the last company we tested ads, we had online focus groups. So it was a technology based company there as well. So I have a lot of friends, lots of friends, lots of friends that have done really well doing tech startups and those kinds of things. And I just did moderately well, right? But to them, this is very pedestrian. These guys from, I have a friend that was one of the early Google employees and he runs a, a fund with all these other Google people. What they like to do is they like to invest in 10 startup companies. And they like to get on the board and they like to do all this fiddler and then get really involved. And then one of them hits and nine of them, they lose their shirts, but one of them hits and that's what they do. Mm -hmm. It's wheeling. I mean, it's really fast paced. It's changing all the time. This is very, very pedestrian to them, but, but you know, it's a get rich slow kind of thing. I mean, they are paying a ton of taxes. And so now what they're doing <laughs> is calling me. <laughs> You know, six years, seven years later, they're like, pedestrian sounds good at, at the older you get, right? But a lot of those folks are already rich and they don't, they don't understand real estate. Same thing as a lot of people don't understand real estate. And so it's really about, this is what Moore is all about. It's about the tax benefits. It's about the, the income and it's about the mindset of getting out of what we are taught and what we see on TV and what our, what the financial services industry uh, wants us to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. And they're making so, tons of money. Yeah. So what, what about, what about the people again, who are looking, they like, they, they want to change their mindset. They, they want to take the step and get involved with the business again, and there is a lot of options now where you can go and get yourself educated. One of them is mentorship. So would you recommend somebody to join, uh, you know, just get a mentor from a get go and, you know, would that make an easier kind of a, you know, introduction for them to into the business? Well, definitely. I mean, but to get a mentor, you really have to understand and know what you want out of that. Right. It's, 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 and I, the first thing that I would do is read, you know, I would read Rich Dad, Poor Robert Kiyosaki. I would read Tony Robbins. I would read, I mean, because he's talking about this. There's a book, Unshakable, that talks about money. Mm -hmm. um, and and I would read a book uh, by, by a guy named Tom Wheelwright called Tax-Free Wealth. Yeah, um, that, yeah. So I would, I would, and I would read Joe Fairless's book on real estate syndication. Because in that book, he tells you really everything you need to know. Once you read Joe Fairless's book on syndication, you know, you know how to do it. Then the, you know, read it slowly, read it again and read it again. And, but it is a ton of work. So if you're prepared to do the work, then you hire the mentor. Mm. But if you hire the mentor before you're ready to do the work, then you know, I mean, it would be fun. 
I mean, you're not, you're not like, I don't believe anything's a waste of money, right? Really, it's all how you use it. But it, to me, it's a lot of money for a really good mentor if you're not going to take advantage of all they can offer you. Definitely, definitely. Great advice. Thank, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, because again, a lot of people thinking about it. I, I mean, it's um, kind of a fancy to say, oh, I got a mentor and he's like this famous whatever person. And again, there's a lot of people watching who are, you know, they don't have a lot of money to go into real estate and maybe they have a capital for, for the deals, but they don't have a money to invest them themselves. So maybe spending all these 40, 50,000, whatever, you know, mentorship programs might be a little bit too expensive for them. So you mentioned a couple of books, you know, cause maybe that person has 20 bucks in a pocket available and he would say maybe, okay, so there are some books available that I can go and grab. You mentioned a few of them, Rich That Poor That, Joe Fearless. So any other three like business or real estate books that you would recommend for people to go and grab? You know, I would start there. Um, and I would, there are many, I mean, any kind, I'm a big, you know, you have to be, it's a mindset. It's an abundance mindset versus a scarcity model. It's, there's a lot of, a lot of all of that. I mean, I hired a, a business coach when I was ready, but, but I, the successful people that have gone through these coaching programs that, that I've, that I know have have done that i mean they've they've gotten a little experience maybe in real estate even if it's their house i mean just it's hard to do this not understanding just kind of the basics of how real estate works you don't need to buy a bunch of single family homes though it doesn't that doesn't just understanding it's understanding and knowing what to do but then getting a mentor to do it yeah and when you're ready to go all in the successful people that I know um, have, have done that and have gone all in with, uh, with this. Got it. Got it. So but, if somebody's who's watching, they're ready to go full in. Okay. They, they read the books, they got the mentor, they got some properties, you know, maybe, you know, that they, they can put on, on the contract and they have capital in line, you know, like everything's ready. So would you recommend for somebody to go into the deals by themselves or should, should they get a partner as well? They really need to get a partner to do a large multifamily. Now you can do smaller deals on your own, but even, I mean, even any, anything over a million dollars or whatever. I mean, most, most people it's tough to do, you know, without, without a partner and no matter what you're going to have to pay somebody or do it all yourself. And if you've got a full-time job too, I mean, that's, think about it. I mean, running an apartment complex, you got to hire a management company or you have to do it yourself. I mean, that's only the, the only two ways to do it. Right. Yeah, yeah. So you've, and if you hire a management company, you got to manage the management company. So there's work involved here. Yeah. So, but but it's not rocket science right and it's not any i mean you can do it i mean I'm, I'm here to tell you you can do it and i can name you gazillions of people that have done it but there's work involved in this and there's uh, that's what people don't understand they're, they're, i talked to a guy the other day that when people come up to me all the time and want me to coach them or whatever and i do i have a couple of coaching clients but it's more of a one-on-one -on -one thing and and they'll they, you know he 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 wanted to get into multifamily. He couldn't tell me why to so make a lot of money so that's first thing yeah you gotta find out why you want to do this why because if you don't have a large why a big why other than making money i know some people that do but you know, to me, it's, it's all about my life, right? We're only here on the planet for a little while mm. and it's making a difference. It's being able to, to make a difference in a lot of ways. Right. Yeah. That's another topic. Right. But, but it's very important. And, and so it's, it's the why is, is critical. And so it's getting your head right. And it's learning the mechanics, if you will. And then it's getting, hooked up with the like-minded people that are that want that have the same goals as you do and the same whys the same whys are very important because if you've got somebody on your team that all they care about is making a 
boatload of money and they don't care about other things, I mean, believe me, I want to make money, but if that's all they want to do, they're going to do things like, that's how slum lords are, right? I don't want that, mm, right? Yeah. So it's important to me to, to find business people that, hell yeah, we want to make money. But we also want to do, there's some bigger things that we want to do. Yeah. You, the more you give, the more you get, if you will. Oh, love it. Love it. It's definitely now you probably guys can see the same what I'm seeing. There's a lot of a kind of a mindset involved towards real estate. It's not only, you know, getting the money and investing the money. Like you have to understand, first of all, how wealthy people think uh, before you even make any investment. So there's a lot, you know, to work with the mindset and get, oh, get my uh, book when it comes out, of course. I mean, yeah. that, that hidden investing and it's going to be out probably the end of March. So. So here you go. We, we're going to definitely include the link for that so you can go and grab it. It's going to be on Amazon probably. Or, or Oh, yeah. It'll be everywhere. So Yeah. Here we, we go. go. So we're looking forward to it. So definitely. I need to plug that. So <laughs> get everybody else's, but get mine too. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay. So I would love to, you know, if you can, to share some of the stories because, again, we have so many people coming to the show. And, you know, some of those people or, you know, people that I meet, they're saying all the good stories again, because nobody likes to talk about the nitty gritty, you know, the bad uh, deals that went down, but maybe you could share some bad and the good investments that you had in your 20 years experience. Yeah. So, so I'll tell you a bad one, not a bad one. I see that's just it. If you mitigate the risks. So first of all, something is going to go wrong. None of these are like Swiss clocks. Right. But so you just know that. And so, to, do, to deal with that, you need to mitigate risks. You need to make sure you have enough money uh, in reserves. You need to make sure that your the property is cash flowing already. You need to make sure that you have a loan product that you don't have to get out of in the wrong time. So I'll tell you right now, we've got a property in Dallas that there was a big tornado. And I think, it, don't hold me to it, 117 units, like six of them. Um, and, got were damaged and and uh, we had some roof damage and so there's some damage and so what we were having to do is kind of pull back and the first thing we're doing is the general partners are not getting paid yet until we get get all of that and that's what i mean i mean you can't it's hard to get into this thing if you need the money right away and you need you know and and so we're holding back on that just to be super conservative we're able to still pay the preferred returns to investors, but we've moved the business plan back about six months. Um, and so, because it doesn't make any sense if we're going to have, I got light coming in here. doesn't make any sense if we're going to have, um, you know, bulldozers and stuff to, to start you know, executing the business plan like we had, we had planned to do. So I'm not worried about it. I'm not concerned about it, but it's, it's a blip right? Mm -hmm. And so you have to communicate with investors. You have to, you know, be, be on top of that. And it was just in uh, something that, that you got to have contingencies for, right? Um, same thing happened to another deal that we did in Houston where Hurricane Harvey flooded several buildings. And so some of the, some of the, the community was really uninhabitable. And so what we did was we pulled back on returns to investors for six months while we've dealt with insurance and all that stuff. But see, at the end of the day, we had insurance that made up that income, right? So that's one thing. You've got to have good insurance. And, and you know, we paid all the back returns to investors. We kept the property another year. And we sold the property, I think, last year or the year before, and it was like a 20-something, low 20s annualized return. So if you mitigate, if you've got people, and again, it's running a business, and it's communicating with investors, and it's not flipping out, if because something's going to go wrong. Mm. And we've had little things. We've, got, we've had management changes, you know, where the management company isn't doing what they say they're going to do. Um, uh, yep. one of our properties, the, the, somebody built a brand new humongous complex right next door that we didn't really plan for. And they cut their rents like crazy to fill it up. 
And that affected yeah, your property? Affected our occupancy, but see, that's another thing. We stress tested it and we knew that we could go, our income could go down 30% or something before we got into trouble. And so the trouble happens when you don't have the experience and a plan for the stuff. Yep. And then you don't have the wherewithal. So you, that's why you got to, you know, it's all how you manage it. It really is how you manage it. People think it's finding a deal and buying it, but it's, it's really executing on the business plan. Yeah. Love it. Love it. it. It just gives you guys a totally different perspective probably on things. Cause I'm just, I'm, I'm just, you know, into it as well. I'm, I'm swimming, swimming into this all information here and just, you know, drowning in all these stories. So it's just phenomenal. I love that you share that, you know, again, because that's a different perspective that people have when they starting, you know, in real estate business. Because again, the thing that you mentioned, like everybody's like, they want to get paid. And like, this is like, I'm going to travel, go to Africa. And like, they're thinking about themselves, basically, what they're going to do with the money and kind of, a, you know, the investors that they have is kind of a secondary thing, which is a differently, definitely not the mindset that somebody should have when they come in to invest into real estate. So I love it definitely for, for sharing that. So any great stories that you would love to share, you know, in, in your experience as well? You know, just, you know, the whole thing has been a great experience. Just the people that I've gotten to know. I love the people in this business because honestly, you cannot do it yourself. The, it is a mindset of abundance. There are plenty of people needed to do one of these things. Um, and and i've just really found people are really willing to share what they know and um uh, and I, I i i just think it's a really beautiful thing i i and the lives that we've been able to change i mean i don't pay 50 percent on on taxes anymore it's a game changer i've been able to help a couple of friends do the same thing and now they've left their careers so it's it's really a a, a great a great thing. I mean, you control your time and all of those things too. But if you, I have kind of a higher, I think we've got too much, the people that I think we're paying too much taxes, getting too much in return. And, and, uh, yeah. and, and the people that are really working and, and actually successful need to be role models. We need to learn from the 1%. Yeah. You don't need to redistribute from the 1%. Everybody's mad, but why be mad? I mean, let's do what they do. Exactly, exactly. Again, different perspective. And I, I love it what you just mentioned before as well, that we all brought up in here. Again, we, we are all in the journey. And whatever we're going to leave after or, or while we stay here is definitely super important. So again, as you see, you guys, like Holy, she's just giving a ton of value. She, she's been onto this journey long enough, 20, 20 plus years counting. And she's just looking to give again, the book is coming out. So again, there you will find a link down below. You can grab all this knowledge, uh, you know, like it, it's incredible. So thank you. Thank you really for, for being on, on the show. But uh, before we go, I still have thank a couple you. of questions because I'm just. Okay. Uh, we got five minutes, four minutes. Awesome. We, we, we're going to, we're going to handle it. No worries. Lightning. Yeah. Let's so, go. Yeah. So again, you know, having um, this beautiful year, so first of all, uh, 2020, Happy New Year. It's, it's a February, but I think it's still the time to say Happy New Year. And uh, I'm sure it's going to be magical for you because, you know, I'm just looking at the bio. You had the 20 years experience and uh, you have over 20 multifamily apartment communities. So, you know, I hope that's going to bring some magic, magic to, to your, um, you know, to, Without your, a doubt. Yeah, to, to your year this year. So would you share some of the business goals beside, you know, coming up with a book, anything that you're going to put out, some exciting stuff for this year for your business? Yeah, so, so I really want to create some, some learning out based on my book. So that'll be the, the next thing that I do. I want to obviously do some, uh, do some deals. So I would like to do, uh, I did nine deals last year, or eight deals. And so, so I'd like to do a smaller number this year and make them kind of bigger mm -hmm. uh, or play a bigger role in them. Um, and then I have a daughter that uh, this is probably most important. I have a daughter that's a sophomore in high school. So we're getting ready looking at colleges and all of that sort of thing. So I'm going to be there for that. Take her around and I'm trying to get out of the sun. So yeah, no worries. No worries. So I'm up okay. at our house in Woodstock. So I'm kind of in the, 
in the woods here. Yeah, we live yeah, in yeah. Brooklyn, and you know, I have a we have a place up here in Woodstock, New York. So yeah, that's yeah, where yeah. I'm getting the trees cut down right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You told me that before. Yeah. So awesome, awesome. Definitely, you know, I appreciate you being here today, uh, and just sharing all the knowledge and wisdom. Like all these years, like you can feel where when somebody has the experience and they actually you know, talk the talk, you know, because like, again, coming back, I, I don't have anything bad, you know, against people who are looking to join syndications, but you know, some of the people, they just, you know, hundred million dollars under, under management and, you know, there's nothing, you know, to give and you just shared so much great, valuable information, you know, to the people well, who are looking to get started. Again, the book is coming out. Know, we were all just getting started once. Right. So I yes. certainly don't want to discourage anyone from doing this. I mean, it's yep. changed my life and changed others. I just think you have to have the right mindset to really be successful at it. Like, yep. God, you don't want to not be successful because losing investors money is. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that, that was, that was the thing that I wanted to say as well. Yeah, exactly. So can you just share with people again, I don't, I'm not sure what uh, social media platforms you're on that maybe you can share uh, where you are. So if people, maybe they're, you know, yeah. looking to grab a book or just ask you a thing, few questions? Yeah, the best thing to do is to go to my website, keepmore.com. Um, I'm Holly at Keepmore, and my contact information is on there. Um, and I post on, a, on I'm going to have a Facebook group. I don't have it yet, Hidden Investing. Um, I have a Keep More page. I have you know, so I'm on Facebook. I'm on getting on Instagram. I'm slow to, slow to LinkedIn is a I'm involved in LinkedIn and I write a lot of articles for like Forbes, bigger pockets is a wonderful resource as well. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So you're going to find all the links down below. You can go and click them and, and get in contact with, uh, you know, Holly and just, uh, ask, you know, questions. I'm sure she will be, you know, happy to answer or just leave a comment down below, you know, as well. So again, I really appreciate you being today on the show guys. If you enjoyed the show today's episode, make sure that you like subscribe, uh, share it so more people, you know, your friends can learn how to invest into real estate, you know, actively or passively. And I really appreciate you. And I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you. Thank you.